in summary, we're going to look at the requirement to give notice, both under the contract and under statute, and how those uh, requirements interact and which ones prevail in any given circumstance. We're going to look at the concept of reasonable notice and when reasonable notice will be implied into a contract in the absence of any express term. We'll look at the way that notice works in the context of fixed term contracts and some of the variables that are thrown up by fixed term contracts, particularly those that overrun. We're going to look at the consequences of not giving notice. What happens if the contract is not observed and appropriate notice is not given? We will discuss the mechanics of giving notice. How does it operate in practice? What, if any, are the prescribed requirements in giving notice to an individual? And then we'll look at concepts like the corresponding date rule, which is an important concept in particular where uh, notice is served on, where notice is, is expressed to be in months uh, and how the expiry of that notice ca is calculated. We will discuss receipt and acceptance of notice and the extent to which that is a requirement. Uh, and then we will uh, explore whether notice can be varied or withdrawn unilaterally or bilaterally. So in what circumstances, once given, can notice be amended by the parties? We will look at fresh notice. So where notice has already been served, um, can it be reserved? Can fresh notice be issued when uh, notice is already running running down the clock. And we will look at the slightly obscure concept of an employee's counter notice. Uh, we will look at the contrast between the effective date of termination, which is an important statutory concept and is linked into various statutory uh, rights, obligations, causes of action, such as unfair dismissal, versus contractual termination, and the fact that sometimes those two things can be at odds or different uh, to one another. We will also look at sick leave and how that can impact upon um, a payment in lieu of notice, uh, and in short, the fact that sometimes when people have exhausted uh, their sick pay entitlement, it can render their entitlement to a pylon payment uh, zero uh, without value and the circumstances in which that will happen. Um, and then finally, to wrap up, we will ask some questions. Why have a pylon? Uh, what are the adverse consequences of not having a pylon clause? Is there any reason not to draft in a comprehensive pylon clause into your contracts? Um, and then we'll look at tax treatment, the typical provisions of a pylon clause. So what a uh, textbook pylon clause looks like. And then we'll look at the corresponding contractual uh, mechanism, which is garden leave, and think about how those two things interact. So that's an overview of what we're going to be discussing. I'm going to move now uh, to work through those fairly methodically. Um, and then at the end, uh, we will look at that sort of textbook pylon provision.